Hello everyone, my name is Yu Wang. I'm from UESTC. Our title is Impossibility on Tamper Resilient Cryptography with Uniqueness Properties. It's a joint work with Taga Hiromatsuda, Boichiro Hanaga, and Keisuke Tanaga. First, we recall the tamper resilient model. When proving security of a cryptographic scheme, we usually assume that the keys are perfectly protected. However, in the real world, an adversary may change the keys by executing tampering attacks such as heating up devices and injecting faults. And the adversary may observe the ciphertexts or the signatures generated by the tampered keys. Then the adversary may get some extra advantage to break the security. There have been many examples of successful tampering attacks, such as the ones on RSA, DES, and AES, and we want to consider the tampering model which captures these attacks. There have been several positive results which show the existence of tamper-resilient primitives in the common reference stream model. In this model, the adversary can tamper with both the public keys and the secret keys in any way it wants but it's assumed that there are tamper-proof common reference streams. However, it's still unclear whether we can have secure schemes in the blame model, where we do not assume any tamper-proof CRS. In this work, we show that it's impossible to derive the tamper resilience of a broad class of primitives from any common assumption via black box reductions. Before going to more details, we first define two extremely weak security notions. The first one is weak comfortability, which holds if the adversaries cannot forge a message signature pair without seeing any useful information, even including the verification key. One can easily see that this security notion is weaker than the standard security notions, such as the CMS security, the RMS security, the one-time CMA and the one-time RMA. The second one is weak one witness, which is the same as standard one witness, except that we don't give the public key to the adversary. And it's obvious that this security is strictly weaker than standard one witness. Now we give more details on which class of primitives we consider. First, our negative results capture two types of signatures, which are unique signature and signature with unique signing keys. Here, we require that the signatures should satisfy the weak unforgeability, but this requirement is very natural since the security is extremely weak, as we explained before. For unique signature, there exists only one valid signature for each pair of verification key and message. And for signatures with unique signing key, there exists only one valid signing key for each verification key. It captures many instantiations such as the Elgama signature and the DSA and the Kramershub signature. We also obtained negative results on injective one-way functions, verifiable random functions, and also PKE with unique message satisfying weak one witness. Similar to the case of weak confidentiality, any meaningful PKE should satisfy weak one witness. Here, by PKE with unique messages, we mean that for each ciphertext, all the valid secret keys of a same public key lead to the same decryption result. As examples, we showed how it captures the Kramer-Schub scheme and all the unique key PKE schemes in our paper. And in this presentation, we will focus on the negative result on unique signature for simplicity. We now define temporal resilience in the plane model. Since we consider negative results in this work, the weaker the security is, the stronger our results are. An adversary in this model consists of three parts, which are tamper, break one, and break two. They are not allowed to communicate with each other. 
Tamper is a selective tampering function which takes as input a public key, a secret key, and outputs a tamper key SK prime. Break one takes as input a public key and makes a signing query which is M. Break two takes as input the public key, a signature generated by a tamper signing key, and tries to forge a message signature pair. If the probability that the forgery is valid is negligible, and the message in the forgery is not the signing query, then the tamper resilience in the blame model is said to be satisfied. One can see that this security is very weak, since we only allow the adversary to tamper with the key once, and make only one signing query. But again, since we only consider the negative results, the weaker it is, the stronger our results are. We now recall the black box reduction from common assumptions to temporary resilience. The reduction has black box access to the adversary and can make queries adaptively in any order to the three components of the adversary. If by making use of a successful adversary, the reduction breaks the underlying assumption successfully, then we can conclude that the temporary resilience holds under the assumption. We now give the intuition on how we show impossibility on black box reduction for temporary resilient Unix signatures. To show this, we just have to prove that the reductions do not benefit from having access to the adversary. We consider two cases. In the first case, the reduction gives correct keys to the first component, which is tamper. In this case, the reduction already knows the signing key and can forge the signature by himself. And due to uniqueness, this signature computed by reduction should be the same as the one generated by break2. Thus, the adversary does little help to the reduction and the reduction can break the underlying assumption by himself, which gives us the conflicts. We now consider the case that the reduction does not give the valid keys to the adversary. In this case, the keys may not pass the verification by the adversary, and then the adversary does not have to give a tampered key to the reduction. In this case, the reduction will learn no information on SK prime, which is the tampered key. Then, due to the weak comfortability of the unique signature, the reduction cannot answer the signing query correctly. Since the reduction cannot simulate the view of the adversary now, the adversary does not have to give a valid forgery to the reduction. As a result, the reduction cannot use the adversary in a meaningful way. This is the intuition of our idea, and to show the strict proof, we have to take care of two points. The first one is that the reduction can make adaptive queries to the three components in any order, and the second one is that we have to find a way for temper, which is the first component, to check the validity of the keys. To give the formal proof, we use the framework of simulatable attacks by weeks. In this framework, we first need to construct a computationally unbounded adversary to break the temporal resilience. Then we define a simulator which runs in polynomial time, but is indistinguishable with the adversary. Notice that the simulator doesn't have to run in a legal way. It just have to simulate the adversary. It doesn't have to follow the game. The distinguisher can make adaptive queries for any times and in any order. And if the simulatable attacks exist, which means that if we can construct the adversary and the simulator, then there exists no black box reductions from standard assumptions. The reason is that if there exists a reduction that breaks the assumption by having black box access to the adversary, 
Then it can also break the underlying assumption by having access to the simulator, which runs in polynomial time. This means that the underlying assumption can be broken in polynomial time, which gives us the conflict. We now show how we construct the adversary. The three components of the adversary share a random function in the start of the game and cannot share any common state anymore. All the three components compute FPK to obtain the random coins, which are RG, RS, M star, and M. RG is used to generate the tempered keys. RS is used to forge the signature. M star is the message in the forgery, and M is the signing query. Tamper will check the validity of keys by checking whether the signature for M star generated by using the random coin RS and the secret key SK can pass the verification. If the check works, then Tamper generates SK prime by making use of the random coin RG. Notice that PK and SK do not have to be a valid key pair for any message. They just have to be valid for the message M star. Then break2 checks whether the signing query is correctly responded. If the check works, it uses brute force to search a valid signature sigma star, which passes the verification. Due to correctness, the adversary must be able to break the temporary resilience if the challenger runs in an honest way. We now consider the communication between the distinguisher and the adversary. If the key is given by the distinguisher did not pass the verification by tamper, then the distinguisher will learn no information on PK prime and SK prime. In this case, no matter how the distinguisher makes queries, it cannot answer the signing queries due to unique unforgeability, and then break two will not forge the signature by using brute force. This means that we can simulate the adversary easily in polynomial time. We now consider the case that the distinguisher has given keys passing the verification. In this case, to simulate the adversary, a simulator does not have to use brute force as well. It just uses SK, which is given by the distinguisher, to generate a forged signature. The forged signature must pass the verification. The reason is that we have checked the validity of the secret key, which is SK before. Also, the signature, which is sigma star generated by the simulator, will be the same as the one generated by the adversary by making use of brute force. This is because of the uniqueness of the signature, and this will hold no matter in which order the distinguisher queried. As a result, we can simulate the unbounded adversary in polynomial time anyway, which means that the simulator attack exists. Now we give the conclusion. This presentation shows that there exists a simulatable attack for unique signatures. This means that it's impossible to prove temporary resilience for unique signatures by black box reductions. In similar ways, we can also construct uh, simulatable attacks for signature with unique signing key, PKE with unique message, verifiable random function, and injective one-way functions, which means that it's impossible to derive the temporary resilience of these primitives by black box reductions. Thank you for your attention.